Let's talk about using PoE cameras in HomeKit. Unfortunately, HomeKit doesn't support any PoE cameras natively at the time of this recording, but it is possible to integrate them into HomeKit using something like HomeBridge or Scripted. And you can even get them to support HomeKit secure video. So there are some real advantages, uh, in my opinion, to using something like Power Over Ethernet for your cameras, which is why I wanted to get them set up here in my house, even though they don't have that native HomeKit support. We'll talk about those advantages, my setup, and you know what I'm using, the integration using both HomeBridge and Scripted, as well as some of the downsides. There's a lot to cover, let's go. Yo, what's up guys, thanks so much for joining me. My name is Shane, if you're new here, and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using Apple's HomeKit, with new videos published every Sunday and live streams every Wednesday. So I'm replacing my very old wired camera system with some new PoE cameras here by Reolink. I wanted to get them working and recording in HomeKit with support for HomeKit Secure Video, which again, they don't natively support. I'm not gonna go into detail today regarding HomeKit Secure Video and what it is, but essentially that's Apple's way of recording, encrypting, and storing your camera footage on your iCloud account. You can privately and securely access your footage from any of your Apple devices in the Home app. If you need more information about HomeKit Secure Video, you know, what it is, how it works, all that good stuff, I'll put a link in the description below to my HomeKit Secure Video 101 video that explains all that. So I tested two different ways to get these PoE cameras to work with HomeKit and HomeKit Secure Video using both HomeBridge and Scripted. I was able to run both of these side by side on my Synology NAS. To be clear, this video is not intended to be an in-depth tutorial for HomeBridge or Scripted or anything like that. Instead, I just wanna give you an overview of what's possible and kinda of share my experience and you know my setup, what I'm using. But first, let's send some love to today's sponsor, Netgear. You probably know the name, and Netgear just released this new tri-band Wi-Fi 6E access point this thing is a beast it's the first Wi-Fi 6e tri-band small business access point with combined wireless speeds of up to 7.8 gigabit per second and support for Wi-Fi 6e you get all the features and capabilities of Wi-Fi 6 plus it extends into the new 6 gigahertz band for an expanded spectrum the 6 gigahertz band has four times more Wi-Fi channels and delivers faster speeds higher capacity lower latency latency and less congestion. Setup is super easy. You can create up to eight SSIDs, control VLAN separately for each SSID, all with the latest WPA3 Wi-Fi security standard. It includes an additional gigabit ethernet port for wiring to another access point or for a switch, maybe for something like PoE cameras like we have here. If you're looking for a very capable access point to add to your network that's definitely future-proof, then this thing certainly has you covered. Click my link in the description below to learn more and big thanks to Netgear for sponsoring today's video. Now, you might be thinking, Shane, you always talk about using all of these other HomeKit cameras, cameras that do have native support for HomeKit. So why use HomeBridge or Scripted with these PoE cameras that don't natively support HomeKit? Well, I'm glad you asked. PoE cameras or power over ethernet usually provide a much more reliable connection. Since they're all hardwired, you don't have to rely on a wireless Wi-Fi connection. Plus you have the ability to record 24 seven locally onto the hard drive, which is something you don't typically get with most HomeKit cameras. Some do allow recording onto an SD card or something like that, maybe even 24 seven for some of those. But most HomeKit cameras, especially those that work exclusively with HomeKit Secure Video are only motion-based, meaning they only record you know, when motion is detected and don't support 24 seven recording. Another bonus is that I can record footage in higher resolutions than HomeKit allows since I'm you know, recording locally onto my NVR right here. 
Uh, then I can have that footage actually downgraded for HomeKit because as you may know, the highest resolution that HomeKit supports is only 1080p right now. If I ever need that high res 4K footage, I can always pull that directly from my local hard drive as long as your cameras support 4K recording. The biggest downside here with PoE cameras is definitely the installation. Well, that and of course no native HomeKit support. With PoE cameras, you're gonna be running ethernet cable Tables, you know probably all throughout your attic or alongside your house drilling holes all that fun stuff it's definitely easier to plug a Wi-Fi camera into an outlet or maybe even not plug one in at all if you're using a battery powered camera like the Eufy outdoor cameras which I do also use and like but going through that difficult installation of installing these cameras once you know will set me up to have reliable constant recording 24 7 and of course, thanks to Homebridge or Scripted, I'll still be able to access them in the Home app. That was the only request by my wife. She wanted to be able to view our new cameras in the native Home app since that's really the only app that she uses for you know controlling our smart home. So I'll be using these 4K PoE cameras from Real Link. Big thanks to Real Link for sending me uh, out this kit so I can make this video. I wanted to go with Real Link for a few reasons. One, they are pretty affordable and easily accessible. Two, they're a pretty well-known brand. And three, I knew I could get them to work in HomeKit. But just know that most cameras that support RTSP streams should work in you know a setup like this. So I have here four of their 4K 8 megapixel cameras, an eight channel NVR here with two terabyte hard drive. I'll put links to everything we discussed today down in the description below. This kit here cost around $450 right now which is pretty good considering that you know it does come with four 4k cameras as well as an eight channel NVR with included two terabyte hard drive. They have lots of different cameras and NVR systems you can check out if interested. Again, links to all that stuff will be down below. One thing I really like about starting with something like this is since this is an eight channel NVR, I can always add up to four additional cameras in the future if I want. And these things are pretty nice. They actually support person and vehicle detection natively. Of course, they support continuous 24 seven recording and you can even install an additional hard drive here to the NVR for up to six terabytes of storage. And when the hard drive gets full, it'll just kind of start overriding, you know, the oldest footage. They provide everything you need in the box, including plenty of Cat6 Ethernet, the NVR, the cameras, mouse, and mounting hardware. You can access the footage from your NVR through the web interface or through the RealLink mobile app. You can configure all sorts of stuff there if you want, like email and push notifications, motion zones, etc. But today we're going to go ahead and skip ahead and we're going to look at getting these into HomeKit. Again, I tried Homebridge and Scripted for getting these to support HomeKit secure video. That means not only is the live stream accessible in the home app, but the cameras also record footage when motion is detected and stores that encrypted footage in my iCloud account. I have my Homebridge instance running through a Docker container on my Synology NAS. I have the Synology DS920 Plus. This stuff should work on any Synology that can run Docker, and that's also how I'm running scripted. So I'm able to run it alongside Homebridge through a Docker container on that same Synology NAS. First, I tried getting these into HomeKit via Homebridge since I was already running Homebridge prior to this project and was very familiar with it. Thanks to the camera UI plugin, you can get pretty much any camera that supports RTSP streams to work in HomeKit and support HomeKit secure video. You install the plugin and then need to configure your camera streams. The trickiest part might be getting the correct RTSP address for your streams. There's a website that I'll link below where you can look up your cameras. You'll need to fill in your username and password and the IP address of your cameras. I pretty much left everything as default except for that stream configuration, which you can kind of see on screen right here. And if everything is configured correctly, after restarting Homebridge, you should be able to open up the Home app and add your camera manually to HomeKit. You will have to add each camera separately in the Home app. And when you do this, you should see the recording 
recording options pop up for HomeKit Secure Video. If you've been using the Camera FF MPEG plugin in Homebridge, you can just copy that same RTSP streaming address from uh, your configuration over there in that plugin and paste it into the camera UI plugin and that'll work fine. Now I did notice uh, once setting this up, it did take a little while before my recording started showing up in the home app. So that's just something to take note of. Next, I tried scripted. There are some good instructions on the GitHub page for installing it on different devices. You can use scripted on Raspberry Pi, Linux, Mac, Windows, NAS. And like I said, I installed this on my Synology NAS via Docker. Installation was very simple thanks to the instructions over there on that page. Now this was my first time using scripted so I'm still kind of getting the hang of it. You do have to install plugins similar to how Homebridge works. They have plugins for Nest, Ring, Unify cameras and then there's the RTSP camera plugin that just like the camera UI plugin for Homebridge should work with most cameras that support RTSP streaming like my Reolink cameras. You'll use the same camera address as before when configuring the RTSP camera plugin. You will need some additional motion detector plugins like the PAM, DIFF, or OpenCV uh, plugins to enable HomeKit secure video and scripted. With that good documentation and a little bit of help from some good friends over on my member Discord server, I had this thing up and running in no time. It really was not that hard to set up. In scripted, each camera gets its own HomeKit code, so I just scan that into the Home app like any other accessory, configure my recording settings, and I'm good to go. Now, after using both Homebridge and Scripted, both running on the same device, my Synology NAS, and both configured to stream and record the same Reolink 4K cameras, which do I prefer, Homebridge or Scripted? So for me, personally, I feel like Scripted has just worked better on a daily basis for my cameras. I just feel like the cameras were a little faster to respond in the Home app when using Scripted. There was less no response issues with scripted and the recordings also just seem to appear much faster when using scripted. Now they both do have different options available. For example, you can enable a doorbell, dummy switches, and a privacy switch with the Homebridge plugin, which isn't available over in scripted. But for me, I just really wanted my cameras to be available and fast and reliable in HomeKit. And I didn't care so much about those other features, but do look into that in case that's something that you might can utilize. I think I'm gonna stick with scripted to integrate my PoE cameras here into HomeKit. Now the wife will be happy. She can use the home app to access the cameras and those motion-based recordings uh, in the home app. And then since these real link cameras here are 4K PoE cameras and are always recording 24 seven, if there's ever any need for higher resolution or maybe the home kit recordings, those motion recordings miss something, I can always pull up my local recordings directly in the Real Link app or through the web interface. I know that no matter what, there is always high 4K resolution being recorded 24 seven there locally on my NVR. That's why I feel like PoE cameras are probably one of the most reliable solutions out there for camera security and they can work with HomeKit Secure Video now, which makes me a happy camper. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications because in one of my next videos, I'll be covering my whole new network and rack setup, which does include these cameras and lots of other smart home stuff. Big thanks again to today's sponsor, Netgear. If you're in the market for an incredible Wi-Fi access point, definitely check out that WAX630E tri-band Wi-Fi 6E access point. Jeez, that is a mouthful. It's definitely easier to set up than it is to say, and uh, this thing will not disappoint. For more information on becoming a channel member and getting access to some cool perks like behind the scenes, our monthly video chats, and our members only Discord community that I mentioned earlier, hit that join button below, or it should be also somewhere here on screen. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.